Hi, welcome to Automate Now. I'm your host, Marco Cruz. In today's video, we're going to be adding new things to our framework. We're going to add new tasks, new page objects, and we're also going to learn how to enter text into a text input field. So let's dive in. So just like we did with the home page, where we added some tests here, we're going to start building some more tests here in this other class called Sandbox Tests. And this is from this other page here in our website, the Sandbox area. So let's go ahead and write the first test. The first thing we're going to do is extend the base test class. Next, we're going to create an instance of the sandbox page page object. We're going to call it sandbox. Next, we're going to start writing our first test. I'm going to say text and this test is going to simply verify the page title. So our description is going to be verify the page title. We're going to say public void test page title. Then we're going to have a string here called it title. And here we're going to call sandbox dot get page title. Notice that we're getting an error here. The reason why is because we haven't yet implemented this method. We're not going to worry about implementing this method yet. Let's just keep going with the logic in our test. So the next thing we want to do is make an assertion to verify that the text is what we expect it to be. So we're going to type assert dot assert equals. And here we're going to type title comma. And now we're going to need to enter the text that we expect to find. So let's go to automate now website here and hit F12 to look for the page title. And if we look under the head tag here, we're going to find the title. So I'm just going to grab this title, go back to my test and put that title in quotations here. Now this is the title that I expect to find. If I get an error, I'm going to put my own error message here and say page title did not match. All right, so we're done with this test. All we need to do is now is implement this method. So let's click here and type alt enter and select create method. This is going to take us back to the page object where we can implement the method. This is going to return a string. So we're going to leave it like that. And for the return statement, we're going to say driver dot get title. So we're going to need to extend the base page class here. Now let's go back to our test. Now, if we run this test the way it is now, it is going to fail. The reason why it's going to fail is because by default, when the test run first, it goes to the home page. If we take a look here at the base test class, we can see here that we have the setup method and it's annotated with before suite. And this will navigate to the home page, but it will never go to the sandbox page. If we look at our application here, we see that we navigate to the home page. Then we're going to need to write some code so that we can navigate to this other page here. Remember that in previous videos, we said that each one of these pages would equate to a page object. So the home page will have a page object. The block page will have a page object, etc., etc. Now we can also have a separate page object that will encompass this navigation bar here. So this navigation bar will be a page object in itself. Let's go ahead and build that now. So we're going to go ahead and create a new class here. I'm going to right click here and say new class. I'm going to call this class navigation bar. This is also going to extend the base page class. Now we're going to write a method that is going to navigate to the sandbox page. And here we'll say public and it's going to return the sandbox page. And we're going to call this method select sandbox. Next we will say driver dot find element. Now we need to get the locator for this element. So let's go to the website. I'm going to hit F12 again and select this. And here I'm going to rely on this browser extension called CrowPath. You can also use this other one called Selector Sub. This is actually replacing CrowPath. And here we see a relative X path. I'm just going to go ahead and copy this, go back to my test and use this relative X path. But we're going to apply what we learned before. We're going to put the locator up here at the beginning of the class. I'm going to say bye. We're going to call this one sandbox equal to by dot xpath. 
and we're going to paste the X path. Now we can go ahead and use it here. The next operation we're going to do is to click on this element. So we're going to call the method click and we're going to return new sandbox page. Now that we have the ability to navigate to that page, we can go back to our test and write a method that's going to navigate us to that page. So let's go ahead and create a new method here. We're going to call this one public void test navigate to sandbox page. And here I'm going to say new navigation bar dot select sandbox. Now we need to make sure that this test will run before this other test here. So we're going to use the test ng annotation called before class. And this will make sure that this is the first method to be executed. Let's go ahead and run the test now. When I run this test, we'll see that we're going to go to the home page and then we're going to navigate to the sandbox page. Our test has passed. All right, so now I think we're ready to start playing around with this sandbox page here. And the first thing we're going to do is to try to enter some text into this field here. So let's go see how we're going to do that. We're going to go back to our test and create a new test. I'm going to say test. And this description will be enter text in an input field. Public void test enter text. The text we're going to enter is going to be stored in the string. I'm going to call this one my text and set it to hello. Next, we're going to call the sandbox page object. And we're going to say set input field text. And we're going to pass the text that we want to set. Again, we're getting an error because this method is not yet implemented. So let's keep going. Next, we want to verify that the text that we enter was properly entered. So we're going to say string. I'm going to say display text is equal to sandbox dot get input field text. And lastly, we're going to make an assertion. We're going to assert that the text that we entered matches the text that is being displayed on the screen. So we're going to say assert that assert equals display text comma my text and the error message we want is unable to verify enter text so now let's go ahead and implement this method here so we're going to click this method here hit alt enter and select create method again this takes us back to the page object this is going to return sandbox page the reason why we're returning sandbox is because this allows us to use the dot operator. So for example, if you call this method here and you have more methods down here, you're able to call the other methods by simply calling this method's name, then followed by a dot, and then that will give you access to other methods within this class. And this strategy is referred to as linking or chaining because it allows you to chain your method calls. We're going to see how that is used in future videos. For now, let's just keep going. So here I'm going to say just text. And this next part is very important. What we're trying to do is enter some text into an input field. We don't want to handle all that logic within this page object here because there may be other classes in which we may be doing the same thing. So we don't want to repeat ourselves. So what we're going to do instead is to use this base page class. Recall that we said that this base page class is going to contain any methods that are common to all the other page objects. So in this case, I'm going to say set text and this is going to be a method that i'm going to write later in this page page class for now let's just go ahead and assume that we need to pass a locator for the element that is going to receive the text so let's go ahead and find out what that's going to be if you go here right click this element and say inspect we see that we have an id so let's go ahead and copy this id now we're going to go up here and say by input field is equal to by dot ID and then the ID name. Now we can put that one down here, input field. 
And the next argument that we're going to pass in is the text that we want to set. Now, if we click on this method and we say Alt Enter as before, notice that we only have an option to create this method inside of this class, but we don't want to do that. What we want to do that is create it up here. So we're going to go there now. And here we're going to go to the end of the class and create a new method. This is going to be public void set text. It's going to require a locator. So I'm going to say by locator and then a string for the text that we want to set. Next, we're going to say driver dot find element. We're going to pass in the locator. And the first thing we want to do is clear that text field. So we're going to say dot clear. Next, we're going to say driver dot find element dot and then pass in the locator again. And in order to enter text into an input field, we use a method called send keys. So we say dot send keys and we simply pass the text that we want to set. Now, once we've set the text, we want to hit the tab key to navigate away from that input field. So I'm just going to call a method here called tab and I'm going to pass the locator. This is going to be another common method, just like this one, set text. So let's go ahead and write it down here. And we're going to say public void tab by, we need a locator. And this is simply going to say driver that find element, pass in the locator. And once again, we're going to use the send keys method. And to hit the tab key, we use a special class called keys. Then we hit enter and notice these are all the keys that you can use. So there's a key for escape, equals, enter, and so on. We want tab and it's right up here. So we're just going to select that and that will hit the tab key for us. Now we can go back to the sandbox page here and we see that this error is solved. And that is because we are extending the base page class. So we have access to this method located in that class. Let's go back to our test. And here we see that this issue was resolved. Now we only need to implement this other method to get rid of this error. So let's go ahead and do that now. So in a similar way that we're setting the text here, we're going to use another method from the base page class to retrieve that text. So this is going to return a string and we're going to say return get text. And we're going to pass the locator for the element that contains the text. And in this case, it's just input field. So let's go to the base page class and implement that method. We're going to say public and this is going to return the string get text and we need the locator for the element that contains the text and we're going to say return driver dot find element pass in the locator and then we use a method called dot get text if we go back to our tests we also have no more errors let's go ahead and run our test to see what happens And as we saw, the text was entered, but our test failed. Let's see why. If we click the test name here, we see that there was an assertion error. It says unable to verify enter text. We expected to find hello, but found nothing. So you may be wondering, how come it says that it found nothing when we did see that the text was entered? For that, we need to take a look at how we're trying to retrieve that text. Let us go back to the website to see what may be going on. If we look at this field here, let's go ahead and enter some text. And then I'm going to hit tab. Now I'm going to right click this field and inspect it. Notice that nowhere in this line here do we see the text that we entered. However, we do have this attribute here called value. So there is a method that we can use to retrieve the text by calling this attribute called value. Let's go back to the code and we're going to go to the page page class. And for this get text, we're going to change this code here. And instead of get text, we're going to say get attribute. And in here, we pass the attribute name, which is value. Now we're going to rerun the test. And here we see that the test passed this time. So you may be wondering now, how do I know when to use get text versus get attribute? And for that, let's go back to the website. So generally, let's say, for example, that you have this text up here. Let's go ahead and inspect this. 
Notice that in this case, we can see the text being displayed for this element. This is called the inner text. Same thing for this element here. If I right click on this text here, and I say inspect, we'll see that this is a label. And here we can see the text, the inner text. When you want to get this text here, you would use the get text method. However, when we inspect this input field, we don't see the text anywhere. In this case, we need to call the get attribute. So if we go back to the application, it seems that we would have to create two different methods, one for getting the text when using the get attribute method and another method when we're using the get text method. Instead of doing that, however, we're going to use an if else statement. So the first thing we're going to do is say string display text is going to be equal to driver dot find element will pass in the locator and we're going to call get text. This is the most common way of getting text. So this is the first attempt we're going to do. If we're not successful in getting the text this way, we're going to try it this other way here. So we're going to say if display text dot and we call a method called is empty meaning that we don't find the text using the get text method. In this case, if we fail to get the text using this method, we're going to try to get it this way. We'll move this code up here, and this will attempt to retrieve the text using the get attribute method. Otherwise, then we're going to call else return display text. So what this is saying is that we're going to first try to retrieve the text using this method. If we're not successful, we're going to attempt it this way. By writing our code this way, we're able to handle multiple scenarios in one method. Let's go ahead and run the test again to make sure everything's working. And we see that the test has passed. So just a quick recap here. We added some new tests here to the sandbox test class. We also created this other class here called navigation bar. This navigation bar will allow us to navigate to the different sections in our website. We also added some common methods to this page page class. Now we will be able to call these methods from different classes. We also learned how to enter text into an input field. In the next video, we're going to learn how to do these other type of things, such as selecting a checkbox or selecting from a dropdown. So stay tuned for much more to come. I would like to point out that you can head over to the GitHub page for Automate Now. There you will find the source code for this project. The source code is made available free for you to use.